That's right, everybody. We're there again. Can you believe this week ended with a Friday just like last week? We'll get started in just a few minutes. We'll give everybody about two more minutes to log on, and then we'll get rolling. I'm hoping everybody had a good week. This is uh, hopefully be a good way to end it. Actually, I had a good two weeks because we weren't on last week, so it's been a while. Barely remembered how to get in here and turn everything on. Today, we're going to be modeling the Space Needle. I think. That's what I, I don't know. That's what the social media thing I saw said. So, uh, see how that goes. And I apologize to uh, use the term the only Aaron Christopher called out. Uh, Aaron Powell, please don't take that personally. Uh, we are Aaron. It's cool. Don't worry about it. All right. Got some hello from Hungary in Orlando. Not in, I don't know, that, that may have slurred that. Not hungry in Orlando, but a hello from Orlando, Florida, and a hello from Hungary. It's Dorset, UK. I don't know where that is, but it sounds like it's blustery there. Anybody else? Anybody else coming in from, from anywhere awesome? Not that it's not awesome here, it's just, you know, home is where you are, so it's not a place that's different. <laughs> uh, that's your deep thought for today. Home is a place that's not different than the place you are. Twickenham, London. All right, let's go ahead and... Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome back to uh, some more live streaming. Uh, I forgot to start my key, key logger there. Sorry, we're back now. Now we're starting. Hello, welcome. Welcome back Friday, SketchUp Live. It's time to do this thing. Uh, I got lots of people saying hello. Um, like I said, we are going to be doing the Space Needle today. That's going to be a lot of fun, I think. I actually don't know because we haven't done it yet. We'll find out. It'll be something. That's, I guarantee it will be something. Um, Today, giving us a hand on the other side of the monitors, we actually have a couple people. Uh, Josh, who we've had in here before, and you guys, of course, seen other live streams. So Josh is here. Greetings, everyone. <laughs> That's a big blurry Josh. And with him is Alice, who's one of our new hires. Say hi, Alice. Hello. Hello, everyone. So Alice is actually out here from the, our UK office. She just started in getting trained, and, and uh, somebody higher up than her thought it would be a fun thing to do is to have her sit in here for an afternoon. So. Uh, I told them how awesome our user base is and how much fun it would be. So you guys can all say hi to Alice. And Alice, you work in the UK office, but you're originally from Rome. Is that right? Yes, yes. I'm Italian originally, but uh, working. Wait, 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 don't you don't you always be Italian? <laughs> <laughs> so from Italy originally. Yes. Okay. But I live in London. I will be based in London, and I'm here to learn with you guys as well. So thank you. Awesome. So yeah, so if anybody is uh, from Rome or the UK, you guys can give a shout out, a special shout out to our co-host, Alice, this week. Um, someone is saying that uh, the voice sounds low. It looks okay on this side. Is anyone else hearing low voice? If so, let me know and uh, I don't know, we can see what we can do about that. Steamboat Springs, we've been there before. Hi, Paul. Oh, yeah, good old Steamboat. Let's see, Palm Beach Gardens, Minnesota. That's where the O's are long. Um, did, uh, Turkey. Did Paul join us for 3D Base Camp 2016 in Steamboat? Yeah, were you, were you there when we were there, Paul? That was a fun, that was a fun time. Bristol, UK. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's, Aaron's got my back here. That's right. That's uh, possibly a shortcoming I have. Okay, so we are, before we get rolling, rolling, I do want to point out a couple things. As usual, I did go into our forum and I did start a topic. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if it's just because I'm coming back from vacation. I was, you know, I was off last week, Thanksgiving here in America. Uh, 
I didn't do a, I don't do a lot of prep for these, as you know, because part of the fun of this this whole afternoon is the design process, right? We get to go in and, and see how we're gonna make things, that sort of thing. That's a big piece of what we do. Generally speaking, I try to come armed with some uh, materials that are gonna help inform what we're making. I really don't have much at all this time. So I'm gonna lean on you guys a little more than, than normal even to maybe hop into this topic on our forum and uh, assist me with some images or plans or anything like that. I'll show you what I have to start with, but it's not a lot. So uh, I may need some details of like the restaurant or the, the, the top or the, the bottom section. The middle's pretty easy. We'll knock that part out quick, but the details I may have to lean on you guys. While I was in the forum, I saw something I thought I should at least call this out. So uh, one of my favorite spots is um, to hang out on the forum is here on the gallery section because you can see all the cool stuff people do with SketchUp. And one of them that caught my eye was from my friend Mihai. Mihai is uh, an awesome SketchUp user, makes some cool stuff. He's a sage, but <laughs> he, he took it upon himself to show me up. Uh, we did a Ask Me to Model Anything, what, like a month and a half ago, something like that. Uh, and one of the things we were asked, to, or I was asked to model was a golf ball. And I did an okay-ish job. I actually created a scary, dense, monstrous mesh that was a section of the golf ball that really didn't turn out very well. Mihai went through and used a handful of extensions and created a much better looking golf ball than what I made. So I want to throw that out if you if you guys are on the forum. He's got a video up here. It's about two minutes. And uh, great job. I don't know if you're on Mihai, but awesome job. Good looking uh, model. So check that out. That was a that was really cool. And some some cool usage of extensions too. the way he did some of that stuff was was really cool. Um, and just to throw it out, just a reminder. We do have, Josh just mentioned Basecamp from 2016, 2020 is coming up. And I know 2020 is not for another couple weeks yet. And a lot of people aren't thinking about what they're doing in 2020. But I did just want to throw that out there again. We are already selling tickets and uh, I do have this coupon code. So if you guys do want to get $200 off of a ticket, any ticket you get, uh, $200 off by using the coupon code Aaron Hookup. And uh, that's uh, a pretty good amount. 200 bucks, that's that's something, right? That's Depending where you're at, that might cover, I don't know, airfare, hotel room or two. Anyhow, now I just feel like I'm talking a lot. I'm so tired of hearing me. Um, but that's the housekeeping stuff. I got to get that stuff out of the way first. Apparently, uh, my coffee's kicking in too because I feel like my mouth is moving faster than my brain can feed it. Anyhow, let's get rid of that. Let's go hop in, and uh, like I said, I will keep an eye out on this page right here. If you guys uh, send us stuff, um, let's uh, let's let's do this. Let's let's space needle it up. All right, uh, we're coming here. So, like I said, I did have one image that I thought I could work off of. Um, let's see how that looks. Um, I'll come up here and import from a desktop. You can see, like I said, I don't have a lot. In fact, I have a image and it is called Space Needle, <laughs> which makes, makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna go ahead and import that just as a regular image and we're gonna use it uh, right here. So um, Allison, Josh, can you guys throw our the link to that forum page up in the comments real quick. Sure thing. All right, they got you. It'll be a coming up in just one second. Um, so I was thinking the same thing. Christopher's saying it doesn't look like it's gonna be particularly difficult, and it's not the most difficult thing we've done by any means, but there's actually quite a bit of detail. If you look at some photos, um, it does from far away, kind of looks like a single silhouette with a, a follow me extrusion up at the top but there's actually quite a bit of detail all through the center here, uh, across the bottom, there's actually full building down here and there's multiple stories up here at the top. That would be a good spot to maybe get some additional uh, detail into. So we're gonna play with that. We're gonna see how that goes. Okay, so first thing I wanna do, of course, is scale up this image. So it looks like the full height we have is 602.25 feet. So I'm gonna do what I normally do. I'm gonna come in here and draw a line across this dimension. 
Ooh, look at that. The dimension is not quite square. Or the, the image is not quite square. I'll see if that's going to be a concern once we get this in here. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to make that a group. I'm going to go into that group and use the tape measure tool on that line. And I'm going to type in 602.25 and resize that group. That doesn't seem right. That's because I just scaled it to 602 inches. That's right, here on SketchUp Live, I make the mistake so you don't have to. All right, let's try that again. Let's call that 602.25 feet. It's an important little mark that, that little dashy mark there. Okay, yes, there we go. That looks like a big building. You know, for a second there, I've never been to the Space Needle, but for half a second there, I'm like, well, maybe it's not that big of a thing. <laughs> okay, let's take this now and uh, we'll come down here and we'll rotate that to vertical and see what we're going to do with this thing. Um, so, I'm fairly certain, and you guys can uh, help me out. Actually, okay, so... Uh, I, I, somebody on the forum with a capital green eye has posted a, a cool artistic uh, architectural type drawing of the Space Needle. That's already going to help out. Actually, I might grab something like that because it's kind of showing a little more detail of what this panel right here looks like. Um, I'm already thinking, looking at that drawing. Here, we can actually alt tab over here. So looking at this thing right here, I can see that I'm, I don't have this detail, this right here, in the drawing I have. My drawing is looking at it from the side of this, so I can't actually pull that detail out of what I have. So I'm going to already know I'm going to need a different image. So I may actually save this right now. Uh, let's see. I don't know if anybody out there has a good picture that is like full flat on this piece right here. That would be awesome. All right, so one thing I noticed when I drew this line, so you can see this end, I try to draw it right in the center of the circle, right in the center of this line, and as we pan up, you can see that my line, which is straight on the blue axis, kind of comes just off of this line. It's not much, but maybe, I mean, it's almost a foot, eight or nine inches. Um, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna draw a line straight down the space needle See how close we are to center when we get down here. Okay, so this dashed line is center. What I might do for this, it's not that important, but this is kind of showcasing what you can do for a image that's more maybe crucial or more off than this. So we're not terribly off, we're not off by a huge amount, but uh, let's see how we could fix this drawing. What I would do in this case is get this line. So I know this line's on axes. I drew it straight down the blue axes. What I can do now is I can select my image and I'll use rotate and I'll grab it by the point that I know is correct. This is in the center and then I can come down to where it's off. So here's where I want to move it over. I want this to be on the line. So I can click here and I can rotate that drawing to there. So not a huge deal, but uh, like I said, if you ever get an image that's off more than that, you draw a straight line and something that's supposed to be straight is like, several degrees off, you can real quickly use that uh, line that's on axes as a reference for creating that, uh, putting that geometry in the right spot. Okay, with that, let's, uh, let's keep moving forward. I'm actually gonna explode this, get rid of this, and I'm gonna start thinking about what I'm going to do. Okay, so we have, down here we have a platform, um, so I'm gonna Put a line, we'll start right here, at the uh, elevation height, or sorry, plaza level. And then let's see, so we're going to come up, these legs are going to go up 100 plus 100 plus 300. So I'm going to come up hey. 500 feet. Hey, Aaron, we got a question yes, from our friend Dave. He says, Aaron, did you use large image splitter? I did. And I know, Dave, you keep, <laughs> you keep telling me to use large image splitter. 
And I didn't because uh, there's not much information on this particular drawing. Uh, really, I wasn't worried about information or detail information because there's really not much here. Um, so I know I've done that in the past where I pulled in a, uh, a big image and it ends up fuzzy. Uh, this, was, this is a little bit fuzzy, but that is actually how the image looks. This is not a high quality image. Uh, if I look at the standard image and zoom in, it is blurry like this. So this isn't a loss of uh, detail because I'm importing at uh, 1024. Uh, Aaron, we could import a DXF file, uh, but uh, I don't have one. So, all right, so I've run into my first potential issue here, and that has to do with dimensions. So I put this in as my 600, I should actually verify this. Was this about 602? That is about 602. I just drew a line 500 feet, and you can see it's not even close to where it should be. So. I already have doubts about the, uh, the quality of the image I'm working off of. So I'm going to put a line up 100 feet. All right, we can see where that goes. Go up another 100 feet. Okay, let's see where that goes. <laughs> we'll come up 300 feet. Oh boy, 300 feet. All right, so that's where that goes. So, yeah, I can see that my drawing, this, what this means is that my drawing is not to scale. Not the end of the world, not a huge deal, but there is a discrepancy here. So I'm going to use this as sort of a reference, but actually draw my, my uh, geometry over to the side here. So this is a good thing to have as reference, but what I'm, I actually want to draw is going to be over here using the dimensions rather than uh, the lines or the images here. So uh, with that, um, I'm going to drop a circle right here. This is my base. So this is the ground. This is at whatever plaza level is. And then, let's see, what should I do here? I know that this shape right here, actually, I'll close that up again. Here's what I'm thinking of doing, is taking this shape right here and maybe putting the texture that I pulled off of the forum, or using that image I use as a, on the forum as a texture on here, deforming a little bit maybe if I need to, and using that to create a 2D cutout of one of these three legs. It's probably not the technical term that you should be, that I should be using leg. It's not really a leg, it's a support. I don't know, I'm not an engineer. It's, it's a thing, it's a leg, it's a leg. I'm calling it a leg. Um, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to import uh, my new downloaded image, but rather than using this image, I'm using it as a texture. I'm going to import it and I'm just going to drop it right on here. Make it kind of make it nice and big. See if we can fill up most of the screen with it. And then I'll come right click on here and position my texture. I'm going to try to push that around so that I can see both the top and the bottom. And this is off axis and it's also a drawing. So uh, this is not the perfect reference image, but I think it'll work for what we're going to do. Yeah, I'll let it just step up a little bit. So I'm gonna zoom in. The increment that you drag by is changed based on how close you're zooming in. So if you want to, uh, hmm. Okay, so what I'm thinking now is this should be a straight line. It's obviously a little bit off. So what I can do is I can draw a line like that. Um, you know, that's gonna actually work. So I'm going to just use this as a reference. I'm going to put another line straight down here. I don't think, can you guys tell, does that actually flare out or is that fairly straight? Uh, we've got another image here, which is actually a picture. Uh, it does look like it flares out a little bit, doesn't it? 
it looks like it's wider at the base than it is right here at the skinniest point. Um, hey, Aaron. Yes. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, we were going to type in a response here to Vitali. Uh, yeah, actually, I was just, you mind, lo just looked up and saw that. Yeah, would you mind uh, explaining? It's probably easier to, for you to talk yeah. about it than us uh, type it in. So that is the reason, Vitaly, just that thing. If I come in here and I use the tape measure on this image, it's going to measure the whole thing. So my standard way of doing it is to put a line on a known length. So I just did this at the beginning, is to draw a line like this, group those together, go into this group, and then use the tape measure on the line. When I do that, it's going to pop up and say, do you want to resize the active group? Hitting yes will just shrink what's in the group instead of the whole model. So uh, tape measure resizing is context sensitive. So whatever you're in is what's going to be resized. So if you're in nothing, it's going to resize the whole model. Um, so I actually don't want to do that. All right, so like I said, now it does look like we flare a little bit. Um, little bit, that's an, that's an arbitrary value, right? Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna think, <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna think, so I'll take that shape and I'm gonna center it right there and I'm gonna use So I'm kind of just hacking together some, some values here based on this picture. But that's about the, the shape, the taper, based on this image that we have. And that takes us up to here. It looks like that stays the same size then before, run a line right at the middle, and then I'm going to put a line like this. All right, so that's my half there. I'm going to use rotate on the blue axes to grab that shape, flip it over to the other side. All right. There we go. So now what I have is, if I erase this, is that. And again, I'm inferencing that off, or, or Referencing that off the image, uh, I don't know that's the exact alignment, but it's a, it's a pretty good start point for my geometry. So I did all of that, so it's symmetrical too. So if I draw a line right down the middle here, these two halves are exactly the same right now. Um, in fact, I think I'm just going to do that. I'm going to actually finish updating one half of this, and then I'll just bring that over rather than trying to keep my left and right half the same. So one thing that does happen on here is this is not an even, it doesn't just go like that and break. It actually has kind of a curve there. You can see if you look at any of the images. So uh, we're getting a new image right now as we speak. Nope, it went away. Um, so I'm going to come in here to draw Bezier curve, which is an extension. It's an extension from SketchUp. So it's, a, it's pretty close to a native tool, but it's not a native tool. Um, I want to have a just a slight curve at the top, so it's just going to slightly come off of where it is. And then down here, I do want it to go in line with that vertical line. So it's hard to see exactly what I'm drawing. It's a teeny little curve. It gives me that curve rather than the hard uh, line that I had before. So the other curve, this curve right here, I want to put in with Bezier curve as well. So I'm going to go right back into Bezier. I'm going to click right here. I'm going to click right here. I want to stay parallel to this on the first section. And then down here, I actually want to come down to the red axes because I do want this to join right into the other half. So I want to make sure I come out on the red axes and I'm going to click there. So that is what I got for that top section. Um, so something to note is that this isn't, it, it's not, so I'm modeling this as a flat, oh, Christopher Moran's heading out. Um, bye, Christopher. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> uh, 
He said he'll be back when he can. That's good. Um, because I'm bound to screw something up, and if you're not here to keep me on track, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, hey, speaking of not being a, of getting off track, uh, I've probably done enough work that I should save by now. So I'm going to come up here to file, and I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to save this to my desktop as the space noodle. Some of you probably already called that. But that's what I was going to save it as. You guys got it. Um, but I was saying, so I'm modeling this flat right now. If you actually look at the, this, this most recent image shows it pretty well. It does, it does bend out of plane this direction as well. So um, we're going to account for that. We're gonna, we'll do some intersecting of two different pieces of geometry, and we'll get that, uh, that, that done as well. But right now, I want to get the fit flat, the face this way uh, piece first. Actually, if we look at this, this is, this is something worth noting. Um, these pieces right here come out further, and this inside section is kind of set in. So as we come down here, you can see that is all further inside than what we have on the outside. So we'll actually want to build this as a couple different heights. I'm not exactly sure how this is all going to work, so not that that's anything new. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's, let's see if I can reference. I'm just trying to come up with a ballpark of how big these, these beams are here. So about four or five feet, something like that. Let's see what this, this scales to right here. That scales to about four foot eight. So I'm going to say five feet. Um, I'm going to come in this way, five feet. And then I'm going to draw a line. I think I do that five inches. I did. And you guys already knew that. You're watching, you're watching my keystrokes. I'm not. All right, so I'm going to hover over this line right here so I can go parallel to it and just bring that up like that. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to put in a line right now. I'll convert this to a curve in a minute, but I want to put that line there. And then I will put... You know, I should go at the bottom and do this as big as possible. Reference this real quick. Uh, so here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cross beam things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, we have the same number. All right. I'm happy then. So I'm going to put this across. Hey, that's five feet too. All right, I'm going to take that option, copy it up to this next one. I did the bottom one because of the taper. I knew that there's, I was going to have some overlap there. Like you see on the right side. So I did the biggest one first. I can just erase that off afterwards. So I'm going to come up to here. And I'm not sure if these are evenly spaced, but I'm going to check if they are by saying, uh, I already forgot, eight. So seven times. Mm, close. They're not quite even. They're close, but not, not uh, like these first ones. One, two, three, four, R, and then after that, it changes spacing. Okay. There's probably engineering reasons behind that. These pieces are closer together, so maybe they need less lateral stability. I don't know. I really don't know what it is, but I just wanted to impress you guys by using a big word like lateral stability. I'm basically an engineer. Okay, so I'm gonna just take this one up here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna place these ones manually. I'm just gonna drop these one after another where they go, and I'm stacking up. Look at that! I'm stacking up the extra geometry here. All right, there we go. So that is what I want. So now I can just buzz down here, knock off these this extra geometry on the sides. Cool, cool. Cool. And this is supposed to be the uh, elevator cart. So that's not a thing I'm missing. It's a thing I don't need. All right, with that, I'm going to erase, erase, erase. Get rid of this extra stuff. As I said, I do want to put an arc here. So I'm just going to do a standard arc. 
I'm going to go from the midpoint here and just pull that down until it turns magenta. That means magenta means it's tangent to both the angled line and tangent to the almost vertical line. So I'm just going to click there and then I can get rid of that. All right. And oh, I can actually get rid of that and get rid of that. Okay. So, um, it does, looking at the drawing, it actually looks like this line carries on like that. I'll take this line, move a line over till it intersects. And then let's see, take this line and I'll offset it from here to here. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to, again, what I'm trying to get right here is this. See, this piece is a bigger piece. It comes out further. This is set in. Uh, you know what, actually, what this may be proven, showing me is this might not be thick enough. This is four and a half feet. Uh, my whatever beam down here is five feet. So I might actually reconsider how I drew that. Uh, so I'm going to offset that here, five feet. Oh, no, you know, I need to just offset all of this. Is this still five feet? If I go... This is a vertical line for some reason. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. <laughs> all right, grab this line and this line and this line, I'm gonna grab all three sides and I'll just go all the way down to the bottom, use offset to take it from this point to this point. That is gonna fill in that geometry I erased, but it will give me this. Okay, I like that curve better anyhow. So now what I can do, I get rid of that, and now I can just clean up this curve if I want to I think I do. I think I want, I want that not quite so jaggedy. Um, so I will put, let me just do a regular arc. Let's see what it looks like with a regular arc rather than, nah, that's, we can do better than that. Back to Bezier curves. We'll go from here to here. And this will be kind of nice because on the first line, I can actually follow this line now. And then the second line is the one where I will take across the red line so it joins right up with that lower section. Awesome. All right, now we got a thing that is a good thing. Yeah, sometimes words start to pour out and I don't really know where they're going and it turns out they didn't know either, so. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of the other half as well. We're gonna look at just, like I said, I don't wanna do this all twice, so just trying to get in one half, sweet. Okay. That's what looks like without the stuff on it, which actually I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go all this and I'm just gonna, whoop, not all, not all of all, just this. And I'm gonna fill that in with some snow. I've had a lot of questions about this because uh, I've been doing some things with paint bucket lately and uh, people ask me about the colored pencils. The colored pencils is part of the default Mac UI for color. Uh, Windows has, I think it's a box of crayons so this isn't a special plug-in. This isn't something neat that I have. This is just because I happen to be on a Mac. I like that they're always sharpened. Yeah, not like a real set of colored pencils. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't that be a pain? If, oh, sorry. That one's one of them. They start to get shrink in the box as you use them. Yeah. So you eventually you have to like reach inside and get pull the colored pencil out. Yeah, that black one would be a short, stubby one because all the black <laughs> edges. Okay. So, I like this. Um, I'm gonna grab all of this and I'm gonna make a component. I'm gonna call it half of a leg. And then I'm gonna take a copy, I'm gonna option copy it over. I don't wanna mirror, I don't wanna flip it over this way uh, because I am actually gonna have depth on these pieces, right? They're gonna go in and out like this. So I don't want to, um, 
I don't want to just flip it around backwards because then my push pulls will be backwards. So what I actually do want to do is, is flip it over itself. So I'm just going to use scale to do that and just pull it through to a negative one on this side and then drag that and drop it like that. All right, so there is my leg in 2D. So that's if I was looking straight at it. Like we were saying before, it's not flat like that. It does have this curve. This is actually, I should pull this image and pull this, this right off of here because this is almost looking straight at the side. Um, what, what, what? Well, let me see what I have over here. What is, because this is looking at them at, you know, one third each. So this scale is not, this is not the perfect reference. Um, but if I'm going to, hold on while I argue with myself about this for a second. If I look, if I cut this in half like that, this will be my reference for my horizontal measurement here. My horizontal measurement here. Let me think about this because I want to thinking is I may actually create a reference here that could be, these are straight for a little while and they, this is straight here and eventually it does start to arc. Let's say it goes right there and then I'm going to use Bezier curve to pull that to here. And again, I want to go uh, on this top section, I have a little more flexibility about where I want to pull that down. This one I do want to end up in plane right here. So I want to make sure I stay on that magenta line as I pull that up. Hey, that looks pretty good. I like that. Um, so that is the shape uh, that I want this to follow on the other plane. Um, I'm going to copy that over. Yeah, so Let's Kent just uh, was uh, also talking about the, uh, the crayons thing. And uh, if you want to repeat that, Aaron, it's a difference in the, uh, what Mac and Windows offers to SketchUp. Right, yeah, so when, in, in an effort to, uh, you know, just be smart, uh, rather than create a custom color toolbox whenever you hit paint bucket, SketchUp just uses the operating systems tool. So whatever the operating system has set up. In, so all these buttons across here, these are actually controlled by the OS. This isn't something that we created the UI for. This last one is, uh, this one where we have the in, model swatches, or you can actually look at your own material, your, your uh, SketchUp materials. That's us. We did this part. These parts right here, though, uh, this is all operating system. And this part with the colored pencils happens to be the way that uh, Mac decided to show the default swatches, basically. All right. So coming over here. I'm trying to decide what do I do now? <laughs> um, what, what, gets, what gets conformed to what? Because here, I better make this a group real quick. This is, I want that to intersect with that. Oh, and I do have to scale that up because my drawing wasn't quite right. Okay, so I want something like that. I want where these two intersect, I want that curve basically where they come together. So I think there's a couple ways I could think to do this. Um, I'm gonna jump in with the first thing that comes to mind, which is making uh, two extrusions and using solid tools to just figure out what this beam is gonna look like. This beam is what, what, I'm, what I'm interested in right now, this, this one piece. So I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab just 
this line right here, I'm gonna offset it five feet, because that's what my, my beam size is. Get rid of this geometry right here. Actually, hold up, undo, copy that. I wanna, I wanna save a backup of that curve because I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess this up right now. I'm gonna go break this, uh, but I don't wanna lose that curve for the future. All right, so I'm gonna take that, offset that by feet. Woo. All right, there we go. I'll take that now and I'll just offset that big. I don't, I don't really, wider than five feet, or wider than this. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna move that off to the side. I'm gonna take a copy of this. I don't wanna work with my master, and this is, maybe I'm just saying this for myself. Um, I have a bad habit of corrupting my geometry, going and making uh, irrevocable changes, stuff that you can't come back from and realizing, oh, I still need a curve there. So then I have to work backwards at the intersect to get my original curve so I can use it on the next piece. I don't wanna do that this time. So I'm making a copy. And at this point, I either want to make unique. So when I change it, it doesn't change the other component. Or in this case, I'm just gonna explode it uh, because I wanna get rid of these interior pieces because all I want right now are, is the rail. The rail, that sounds better than the beam. That sounds kind of like what it is because I don't know. I think beams of being straight things, but I know they're not always. I don't know. They're, this is called something. All right, I'm gonna extend it out. I'm just using Alt to smooth these lines. Modifier key plus eraser. There we go. I'll select that and make that a group. And now all I really wanna do is drag that over so that the two pieces cross through each other. Awesome. I'm gonna double check to make sure it's solid. This is a solid group. This is, oh, it's a group, it's not solid. Let's run solid inspector and find out there is a stray edge somewhere in my group. Hit fix to get rid of that. All right, now I will save. Did it. You guys didn't even say it. I wanna look, hold up, hold up. I have a full page of comments without anybody telling me this. Oh no, wait, Aaron Powell did say that. You got me, buddy. <laughs> oh, and then undo and save. Aaron's all over the save. Sorry, didn't mean to sell you short. Okay, so I'm gonna take these two pieces and I'm just gonna use solid tools to just find uh, where they overlap. So I'm gonna go to tool palettes, turn on solid tools. And I never remember what these are called, but it's this one. Intersect, which finds the intersection of the two solids and keeps it, throws everything that's not intersecting away. So I'm gonna select one, hit intersect, click on the other. All right, and there we go. That is one of our two beams. Cool, kind of. Um, the reason it's not full on cool is I still don't know how to do these middle pieces. I've, I haven't quite figured out what I'm doing yet. Oh, story of my life. Okay, so what I'm thinking about is uh, all right what I can do here let's do this I'm gonna take a copy of this piece right here uh, I'm gonna come in here since it's a group I don't have to worry about it copying I'm just gonna push pull it like that I'm gonna clean up to um, I'm gonna take this group and I'm gonna line it up with the front. Actually don't, these guys are just gonna confuse things so I'm gonna put them off to the side. All right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this group and move it from the edge to the center and then I'm gonna slide it over. What that should give me is this line right here, that intersection right there that is 
where I would want to pull geometry from. So I just need a reference line there. What I can do is I could actually grab these two groups, right click and say intersect faces with selection. What that'll do is it won't actually change the geometry in the groups at all. So if I grab these two and slide them out of the way, you can look and see they're exactly the same as they were before. Nothing has changed there. What it created was these sets of lines, which were just those intersection lines. So really the only line I want is this line right here. So I'm going to get rid of these lines around here and this line here. Then I can, if I click right here, it's just gonna give me one segment. I wanna triple click and get that line all the way down. That looks nice. Oops, there we go. So there's the line, that's the intersection, that's the middle of that curved piece. I'm gonna take that right now before I do anything else and weld it with the weld extension. You guys know weld is something I use all the time. It is a good tool, especially if I have something, this is technically a compound curve because it goes in both directions. With that, I can get rid of this piece and I can take my curve now. It's really a, a beautiful curve, if I might, might say so. It is, I mean, look, look at how many directions that goes. It goes in both directions. Um, I'm actually just holding, I'm white knuckling through this modeling process right now. <laughs> oops, I didn't actually break that right. Um, oops, did I just delete that the whole thing? All right, there we go. So now I have, there's my single curve, one side. I'm going to, sorry I keep panning, but it's, you can't, it's hard to see the whole thing all at once. So I'm gonna command X to cut it. I'm gonna go in context. I'm gonna say edit and paste in place. I'm gonna put it in the same XYZ location, but in context. All right, I'm gonna save that. Now, now I'm gonna get into some extensions. Um, I wonder, can, a DBO push line, another extension that I've, oh yeah, look at that. So a DBO push line is gonna allow me to grab that line and pull a copy straight across the red axes and give me a flat stroke. Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. This is gonna be, so, this is gonna be cake. I'm, I'm pretty much done at this point. Can All you right. uh, do that again? Yeah. That was cool. Let's, so, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it. And again, it's still welded, so it's all one compound line or curve going in multiple different directions. A DBO push line is an extension, and what it lets you do is it lets you take a line at, rather than a surface and do a push-pull. So I can actually take a line now and say, push that line off across an axis, which will give me, so I'm gonna go on the red axis, I wanna go directly this direction, and I'm gonna pull it straight out like that. And look at that. Oh man, that's so cool. That was so easy. Sometimes it's just too easy. I mean, that was, shh, shh, give me a challenge. Come on, Space Needle. No, I'm kidding. That was, <laughs> I didn't know if that was gonna work at all. You guys know I'm not really cocky like that, right? I have no idea what I'm doing. All right, so that's good. We're one piece at a time. I've got this part broken out. Now what I need to do is I need to trace this geometry here. So these little, Half, I, again, I still only want to do half of this. I don't want to do both halves if I can help it. But these little steps that come out, these little uh, cross beams, and then this section in here, I want to get that geometry projected now onto this surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a copy. I do like to keep working with copies whenever possible. Keep that original over there in case I uh, make a mistake, which does happen. I don't have to tell you guys. All right, so there, so that lines up uh, along this axis. So what I can do now is I can take this, I'm gonna make it unique because I don't wanna affect the existing component at all. I'm gonna come into this one and I'm just gonna take each of these surfaces and push them through that new surface. There we go. And what I should end up with now 
is, yep, those are just passing through. I don't care how long they are, I'm gonna delete them in just a minute. They're just reference geometry. Because now what I can do is I can select this surface, my, the surface I just push pulled, not the whole thing either. I don't really care where these pieces intersect with the rail. All I'm concerned with is this right here. I can right click and say intersect face with model. If I hit selection, it's not gonna find anything. If I hit context, it's not gonna find anything. Context says intersect with anything else that's in the same object that I'm in. So in the same group or component, which there's nothing. So I wanna use with model, which is gonna say anything anywhere that it intersects with, which will just be that push-pull geometry I just created. So I'm gonna say with model, all right. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna gamble and say that I did a good enough job that I can delete this. If I come in here, I'm gonna get rid of this, this surface really is what I want to delete. All right, and then delete any of that geometry. What I should have are some 2D planes just sticking out of the center there. Awesome, perfect, that's what I want. Um, I'm gonna save, not because I'm a pessimist, but just because it's, it's good practice and I do those things. Um, Marconi is calling out the JHS power bar. I have to put that down. You're not the first person who's told me to check that out. I haven't used a uh, power bar before. Um, maybe I should try to do that before next time and then whatever we model next time, use that. No, that's too much pressure. <laughs> I won't do it. And I'm not gonna subject you guys to another hour of Aaron learning to use an extension he's never used. You guys have seen that too much already. Um, but I will check out the power bar. Uh, because like I said, I've heard a lot of people who use it and really like it. Um, so I do want to check that out. Um, I will, I'll grab that. Uh, okay, so I have these surfaces. Again, these surfaces, let's look at the hidden geometry real quick. We haven't done this much. But you can see, okay, these guys are pretty straightforward. They're actually flat because this section of the whole bar is flat. This piece right up here, though, we have kind of a crazy set of geometry there. It's a, it is a surface that's curving like that. We want to get some dimension to this geometry. Um, I don't know, let's see, I don't know if any of these images clearly shows how deep that material is. Um, ooh, that's a fun one. Um, ooh. Just do some, some interior, uh... great, my word stopped working for a second there. <laughs> what are those called? Spiral staircase, there we go. Um, all right, so I don't actually have a dimension here. I'm gonna say that they're a foot deep because it sounds nice. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna push this back 12 inches. I'm gonna do that on all the, why is it not closing? That's odd. So I'm gonna go all those pieces. Those are easy, like I said. Um, so that didn't, ooh, no, I said something that wasn't a thing. Push-pull doesn't work because uh, this line is not a straight back line. So it's like it should be. Something's not, something is not, not quite square though. Um, so this corner right here is not actually connected back to this geometry. Just when you thought it was simple. Not so simple. Okay, well that actually kind of goes in line with what I was thinking I had to do up here. One of the things I want to do up here, to, to do this offset, uh, I could manually move some geometry and, and stitch it, but I'm not gonna do that because it's that would be time consuming and no fun to watch. Instead, I'm going to go use an extension called joint push pull. Uh, and I'm actually use, let me 
vector push pull. To take this, and I'm going to pull it along the green axes for 12. There we go. That looks awesome. I'm going to do the same thing on each of these. Ooh, that looks pretty good. All right, so if I take that and make a copy, I'm gonna do the same thing I did before because I'm going to scale and I'm going to scale to negative one and then oops, line those two up. Oh man, I think that's the thing. Okay, so now I have a decision to make. I have to decide now, after I save, if I'm truly done with this and I'm okay destroying my components in order to make one solid piece, or if I wanna go grab these, slide a copy over here. This is the museum, this, this over here. <laughs> these are my museum pieces. That's what I, uh, what I worked from. Okay. Um, now I can actually take these, make that into its own component. Well, it's the full leg. Go in here, explode, and let's see how, how good I did. If I can erase this, ooh yeah, that's the stuff. That means that my geometry lined up, not just good, but great. So I'm gonna erase once of each of these because that's gonna erase the surface on the inside. Once the surface on the inside is erased, like that, then I can actually run things like solid inspector, oop, found more internal faces, and other extensions like cleanups, merge faces, that's gonna get rid of some of that extra geometry like my middle line I had there. Oh man, that turned out better than I thought it was going. I mean, of course that turned out good. This looks awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing. All right, so uh, when cleanup runs its merge faces, it goes through and puts faces together, but if you have a bunch of hidden geometry, you may end up with lines like this. Cleanup's great, but it does sometimes leave geometry back like that, but you can actually use cleanups uh, erase stray edges, and that will get rid of that too. So sometimes you have to run multiple steps in a specific order to fully clean up your geometry automatically like that. Okay. That is that. <laughs> One thing done. All right, so now, uh, if I'm looking at my reference drawing over here, uh, I could take this piece and I'll spin around 180 degrees and I'm gonna put it over here I gotta figure out how to line it up um, so I want it on the ground here and then this direction I want that lined up with the center what I don't know is how close in to make it um, to figure that out, I'm gonna draw another reference circle right here. Again, I don't, <laughs> I, like, I like, Aaron, I appreciate how you throw it out there as a suggestion. You could save your model so you don't lose it. Oh, you, you could do that. Oh, thanks guys. <laughs> I'm gonna draw, again, like I said, I'm calling it a reference circle. I'm not actually going to build any geometry off of this. This is just to have uh, a piece to use as a reference for placing this geometry. The reason I'm saying I'm not going to use this to actually draw anything is there's a lot more segments than my default 24 circle here. Uh, so I, one of the things I have to do is when I go in here, I have to figure out how many pieces there are here because each of these pieces will be a segment of the circle. I'll draw the profile for that and then just spin it around. So. Um, if anybody else wants to hop in here and tell me how many chunks there are here on one quarter, that'd be awesome. Go get them. 
In the meantime, I'm going to take this and I'm going to slide it back along the green axes. So I'll help bring it back to where it just intersects for now. And then I can take that and I can use rotate to option rotate 120 degrees, 2x. All right, there we go. I don't need this anymore. I don't need these two lines right now. Uh, I'm gonna keep these as reference, but get rid of some of them. All right, that is a thing so far. So that's what we got right now. Let's save that. Um, now, so we have a couple things, three, three main pieces, right? So I have something going down here at the base. I have the, what is something along the lines of an elevator shaft coming up the middle. And then of course I have this section at the top. We're only an hour in, so I'm just gonna All right, I took it easy for a second there. Back to work. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, you, Aaron, did you see how I did that? I totally divided 360 by three without even like moving my lips. That was, that was pretty sweet. Okay, so I wanna, I kinda wanna, I, I'm least worried about the base here because, I, because nobody looks at that, I'll be honest. Uh, the pieces I really want to get the most are the top section with the observation and the restaurant and all that stuff. I want to, I want to do this. It's not going to be a difficult thing, but there's a lot of detail in there that I want to get on there. I want to do that piece first. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get that in there. Um, what I'm really wondering is, I don't know if anybody has seen, is there anything online that says how many how many divisions there are all the way around this circle. Um, these are cool views. Um, oh, lots of words here. Full rotation in four, oh, that's not, that's how fast it spins. Um, I guess I have to count some things. Oh, it was built in 400 days. That's very interesting. Uh, I got 44. 44 going once. Let's see. <laughs> so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to say 48. Um, <laughs> Dave was trying to count them on the live stream. Uh, go look at your own, your, your own drawing. All right, I'm gonna say 48. I'm gonna say there's 12 in each quarter. So what that means is I'm gonna take, actually I'll just take this circle right here and I'll change it from 24 to 48. All right, there we go. So that means, okay. If I draw a line out here and a line to the next, this is one segment. So if I put all the detail I need for each of these things onto this one piece, uh, I'm good. I'm gonna do that by drawing, I'm gonna start by drawing the profile Over here. Uh, so let's see. I'm gonna come to here, draw a line across, draw this angle bit down, right here, draw a line across and back up. Here it looks like I got kind of a rectangle thing going on. And I'm, it looks like I got like an arc here, so I'm gonna try to give that a little bit of an arc. 
here. I'm gonna use the same size right there. Take that, pull it straight out. This is straight line or is this arc too? That looks like that's a straight line. Or maybe that's a straight line. Actually, I want to, I want to do the exact same arc. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this line and I'm going to rotate it up like, no, it can't be the same. Well, that, that doesn't work. All right, back to what I had before, like that. And then we'll do an arc. Increase the number of size to six rather or twelve rather than six. Six seems a little bit light. All right, there we go. Okay, um, this is where stuff starts to happen. <laughs> uh, so this actually, there's actually a lot of crazy geometry happening in here. Uh, this that that this. 2D image doesn't uh, really honor because you can see. Okay, just let you guys know. You know, you reach that point where you maybe maybe spend a little too much time in SketchUp. I just tried to use my middle mouse button to orbit that down so I could see <laughs> this view from above. Does not work on the uh, static image well. So these <laughs> these pieces come out. They are. You can see got, I just got like a, a truss thing coming out to a curve out here. Uh, below there, I got a window, and then I got this piece coming out, and then separate from that, I got these, these fins. I'm gonna assume there's 48 fins going around. So what that means is the geometry I'm creating now, I wanna create this observation deck, which I believe does something along lines, well, it comes down like this to a window. And then it drops down something like that. Come out here, it's gonna come up, come back down. Something along those lines. Um, and then this geometry here, I'll add on afterwards, but what I will add on here is this piece that's gonna spin around also. Carrying that on down, go like that. This is gonna come across to here. This will come across to here. And this, I'm not sure if I think this is a curve. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it a curve. Getting creative again. All right. So I'm feeling somewhat positive that that's gonna give me kind of what I want. Boy, that doesn't fill you with confidence. All right, um, I'm gonna grab all of this and slide it over. Oops, 400 feet. I'm sliding exactly over 400 so I can bring it back if I need to. All right, and I'm gonna grab this right here. And well, we'll just do it. Follow me, hit it. All right, so there. I think that'll work. Um, I did, because I had the circle right there, I did lose that, but I can grab this and I can say, follow me with this piece and that'll get me the, the chunk to tie the trusses into when I come back and do this piece right here. Aaron? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Dave just said that he, I find he found a cross section of the, of the top and he will put mm. in the foam thread, so. All right, can use that let's, as well. let's take a look at that. Oh, look at that. Whoa, ooh, ah, whoa, ho. That it is. Cool. So, yeah, so we got some of this stuff. Whoops. Oh, man. Let's look. Uh, 
All right. So yeah, we got this. We got this thing. These little guys sticking out. A little curve. Here's the roof coming down. A little bit of an overhang. I'm assuming this blue line is glass, so that's what this will be right here. This will be glass. And then I made up the dimension of this. Yeah, so then it looks like... All right, so here I have confusion because this looks like... Oh, maybe the observation deck doesn't go all the way around because it looked like over here... Something steps up to where these trusses come in, but this makes it look like it comes up flat like that. And then these come back, yeah, and then we have the arcs and then those pieces. Okay, so yeah, I like that. Thank you, Dave. That that made me feel better about myself. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize, SketchUp artist. I was probably looking down and mumbling to myself, thus the low volume. Val I said volume. I'm relaxed because of the volume, apparently. No, I'm sorry, I was talking to myself. Uh, I apologize for mumbling, but sometimes that's how I think. All right, so there's a couple things I wanna do on here. We, we, I'm gonna, before we go too far, I will put in our those fin shapes uh, and the, um, the trusses, but there's a couple things I wanna do. One is this right here and this right here. These two pieces are actually uh, segmented glass panels. So they go all the way around. And you can see these on, and on any of the drawings you look at. What I wanna do is, I'm gonna, think, I'm gonna do this very simply. I'm gonna double click here and double click here. And I'm just gonna turn off smoothing. What am I doing here? Oh, no, I need to not turn off smoothing. I need to turn on hidden. There we go. I'm gonna grab all of these pieces and I'm going to uh, use, here's what I'll do. I'll go to select only edges. There we go. And unsoften and unsmooth those lines. Same thing here, just get perpendicular, grab across there. Selection toys, if you don't already have it, select only edges. Oh man, you gotta get it. Selection Toys is a huge help. Uh, it's a great tool for um, filtering selections. Basically, that's what it is. It's like a, you right-click after you select something, and it'll, it'll filter off uh, what you have selected. Reminder to save oh, from yeah. Iron Face. I know. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right, Aaron, Aaron Powell, you have elected yourself. When I do get that tool hooked up, where you can remotely hit my command S, it's coming to you. You're gonna get a button in the mail one day and you just sit there on live stream and just hit it for me. <laughs> All right, so that is the top section so far. So two pieces I wanna put in now um, are these trusses that come out that, that hold this ring in place and the others, these fins down below. Um, I'm gonna build these pieces not at the corner, but actually at the flat. And let, let me explain what I mean by that. So I'm gonna grab all of this. I'm gonna make it a group right now because I wanna isolate that geometry. Um, so if I draw a line from, I actually don't have any centers, do I? I'm gonna go ahead and make one. All right, there's my center point. So if I try to come straight out on this part and I create that fin, that fin's gonna have to accommodate for coming down both sides of this arc, right? So the back of it's gonna have to angle this way and this way. If I take this entire model and I rotate it like this, now I can build that fin on what's essentially, it is rounded, but it's a flat section. Same with my trusses here. My trusses can go from here to here on the flat and not have to accommodate uh, that break. So it is taking my geometry and making it just slightly off axis so that, that uh, I don't have a line on axis, but it's gonna make it a lot easier for me to take this geometry and build it right on there because I only have to account for one change there. Hope that made sense. Made sense to me. Um, <laughs> I don't know, hopefully that's good. 
All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create some reference geometry. Because that fin looks like comes down to here. Oops, I missed. I missed everything. How did I mess that up so bad? Somebody should have been paying attention to what I was doing. Yeah, I'm blaming everybody. I'm refusing to take responsibility myself, apparently. All right, what? Okay. I'm getting that back out of the way. So now I can come to this midpoint, and I'm just creating a rectangle right now. So I'm going to drop that vertically down to, I think, goes from the bottom up to, actually goes up to the glass. So that vertical line should come to here. All right, and I'll just draw a rectangle between these two points. There we go. So now with that, I can actually, you know, here, <laughs> yep, that's my first mistake ever. Thanks for catching it. <laughs> um, here is something that I, I just wanted to throw this out there. You guys know I do work with a 3D mouse. I use the uh, Space Mouse Enterprise from 3D Connection, and that's how I do all of my spinning around like that. And I think it's because of this. I find that I very often model upside down or inside from the inside of something, that sort of thing. I think that is because it's so easy to spin around and work on things like this. But it's kind of like working on like modeling something, you know, out of clay or something like that. I can just flip it over and work on it. Does anybody else do that? I know a lot of times, you know, I'm compelled to model things upright, especially with something like a building. But more and more, I find myself doing things like this where I end up spinning upside down through space. You guys ever do that? I'd love to hear your thoughts if, if that's something you uh, ever catch yourself doing. All right, so I need to know how far this comes out. So I'm just gonna use this just kind of as a reference just to get a rough dimension. I know that we've, we've already established this image is not scaled properly, but I can get an, a, an approximation. So it's about five and a half feet out uh, from, all right, come on back, I'm gonna go back up. All right, so from here, from the top, it's about five and a half feet. So let's see, I'll come here. Oop, I was just slightly off. Come this way, 5.5 feet. All right, so that's, that's there. Okay, and let's see, from this shows it not quite going up to the window. This shows it being just below the window. So I think I'm gonna go back with my initial line like that. And then it kind of eh, 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 does something like that. Um, right. I'm gonna use my arc tool to put something like that. And then there's a little bit of flat, and then that thin piece kind of returns back to whence it originated. Like that maybe? Let's look at that. I'm okay with it. Um, all right, I'm gonna grab this surface right here. It's got all kinds of weird stuff going on because I didn't actually close much of it up from back here. Let me do this to Minimize, maybe? All right, anyhow, I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna say right click, I'm gonna save. I'm gonna intersect faces with model. That should break it right there and give me just, nope, something's not quite right. All right, I'm gonna work my way back. Start hacking this thing apart. Come back, face. Get rid of all this extra geometry. Oh man. I think the problem is I had so many intersections terminating at one spot, my faces got confused. I had a confused face. All right, I'm gonna take that now. We need to give it some depth. 
I don't know, I'm thinking a couple inches. I don't think these are huge pieces of material. Maybe they'll be six inches. So I'll come three inches this way, come three inches this way. That looks good. Uh, okay, I'm gonna take that now, make that into a component in case I do wanna come back and change it later on. I'm gonna set my component axis here to the middle though. And I'm gonna call this my fin, <laughs> technical term, and create that. All right, now I'm gonna grab that and I'm going to rotate it from the middle of this panel, modifier key to copy, to here, and I can say 47X, and that goes all the way around. Cool, that was not too bad, that was pretty easy. Um, if subject is equal to save, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, I like it. So we're, I got some people working on an automated, automated script to save for me. Maybe it can be directly connected to how many words I spout. You've been talking for blank minutes. Okay, once again, got one more piece of geometry to model and that is this, and I'm calling it a truss. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, something along those lines. I got a truss shape that's gonna come out. Whoa, 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 whoa. To here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and trace all the way around this and get a single shape that I need to fill. I'm just following the axes there, and I'm gonna take that back to. It doesn't actually go all the way up, isn't that we? It's a little ways down from the top rail, so maybe I'll come down two feet. That goes there, which goes to there. Okay, this is my surface that I got to get all trussed up. Aaron? Yes. Maybe you want to answer quickly Shamir's sure. question? Yes. Which accessory he used for his left, left hand? Yes, so this right here, I'll put it up for, look, oh, look at that, two different views of it, side and top, that's fancy. That's that's production right there, that's production level. This is the Space Mouse Enterprise from 3D Connection. So it is a 3D mouse. It allows me to move in 3D space without using this mouse. So it's nice for a couple reasons. And, and again, I'm just, I'm an advocate for 3D mice. I don't sell them, we don't sell them. Uh, somebody else somewhere sells them, I imagine. Um, but what's nice about it is Two things is one is it leaves this mouse free. So if you use a lot of buttons and that kind of thing, what you can do is while moving from one section of your model to the next model, next section, I can go up here and grab the tool I want to use. So when I get to where I'm at, I can actually start using uh, whatever I need next. It's really nice in that aspect. Um, the other thing it does is it gives you the ability to very smoothly move models in 3D space. So you can see this, I'm, I'm flying this flying saucer around nice and smooth. So if you do a lot of presentations like I do right here, uh, it's a great option, great way to show uh, something in SketchUp. Not a requirement by any means. I use SketchUp for years and years and years, seven years before I ever use a 3D mouse. Um, and people get used to this. I like it because I'd rather show you guys a nice smooth animation rather than a bunch of this kind of thing but people who use a lot of SketchUp know that that's how you zoom, so it's not a big deal, not a requirement, but it is kind of a cool option to have uh, if you're looking for a way to take your SketchUp level to the, your SketchUp skills to the next level. And I will say that uh, having a 3D mouse has made a difference in my own uh, experience using SketchUp. So I think I am uh, a quicker model when I'm actually like in a real design than I would be if I was just uh, using just the regular mouse. All right. Yeah, yeah you bet. All right, so this section, we'll hop back over here. It, it 
does look like, for one thing, I have this in here as a rectangle. Um, this, this thing I put around the outside, it's obviously not a rectangle. It actually does taper to a point. We can fix that, that's an easy one. I'm trying to look at what this geometry is here and I think it's really just a top piece and a bottom piece. Um, so I'm gonna go for, yeah, you can see on this, on, on uh, this image right here as well as the one the cross section Dave put up. So I'm gonna go for something like this right now. Um, so first thing I wanna change is this. So I think what we could do is Trying to think if there's a way I can economically, and just for fun, really, <laughs> change this. So I'm going to say that what I want to do here is I want to lower just this outside ring to deform this ring. I could at this point delete it, draw a new profile real quick, and just do a follow me. But this is why we're here, right, is to, to learn some new stuff. So one of the, the issues that comes up when you get into... Uh, working with follow me's is it's really, really hard to maintain geometry. It's real easy for geometry to get broken. Doing things like welding and, and uh, refreshing circle geometry, that kind of thing can help, but uh, it can, it's very easy to get broken geometry like this. Problem with broken geometry is what I wanna do is I wanna grab this entire outside ring and push it down. In order to do that, I would have to sit here and click 48 times all the way around this line, and that's not fun. Um, fortunately, one of the things you can do is take advantage of the double click. So when I double click this surface right here, it lights up the surface and any lines that create it, so the inside circle and the outside circle. That's great, you say, but that doesn't really help in this situation. That's right, right now, this wouldn't help, because if I move this, I would deform the circle, but just like this. That doesn't do a whole lot for me. What I can do, though, is I can click over here. And now this line is selected, or this surface is selected, and so is this top line. So if I hold down uh, my modifier key to deselect, I can pick this surface and turn it off. And if I double click this surface, it turns that whole surface off and the edge. So now with five clicks, I think that was five, I have just this, out, just this piece right here. So I'm gonna to go to uh, hop up here, and right now while I have just this line selected, I'm gonna to go to extensions and weld it. So now it's really easy for me to select it, and I can move it vertically to create that, that tapered shape. Um, that I think is gonna work. So it looked like, actually let me hop back over here. Uh, it has a little bit of a curve on the bottom and it kind of cuts back at an angle. Let's, let's make that, let's make that cross section. I'm gonna come back and smooth these out again afterwards, so I'm not too worried about that right now. Um, but let's do the same thing down here on the bottom. I'm gonna grab this piece right here and pull it down a little bit. So I'm gonna select, I'm going to select this piece right here. I'm gonna hold on my modifier key to turn that off. Oops. Double click, click. And I can move this one vertically just ever so slightly. And then there wasn't just, it's also moved out. So to move it out, I'm gonna hit scale and I'm going to uniformly scale around the middle. So I'm gonna hold on the option and the shift key and slide that out. All right, there we go. So just to check, let's see what that looks like. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in a section plane. If I slide that, oops, oh, don't, don't, don't move the circle. There we go. Move that section plane. That's the shape I ended up with, which looks pretty close to what I got going there. If anything, I might be able to take that top circle and uh, pull it back. But all right, I like the way that looks. Uh, I'm going to triple click here and just soften and smooth that to get that back to looking like one piece. All right, that does change what I have to do for my trusses here though. I just changed my geometry, so not a big deal. Get rid of that, and I can get rid of uh, some of this. 
just the pieces that are out here I want to get rid of. Cool. All right, now what I can do is I figure out what the best way to do this is going to be. I want to, I'm going to draw a line from midpoint to midpoint because I want to copy that geometry up to where it intersects there. Oh, yes. That is good. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing down at the bottom. I'm going to draw a line from midpoint to midpoint. I'm going to connect these two on the inside, and then I'm going to follow this arc down to where it hits there. Beautiful. So now what I got to do, I'm just copying a, a piece out here. I want to use this geometry now to make my trusses. So really, I just want to take these two lines right here. I'll just, I'll do one at a time. Offset. Oh, did I bend geometry? I don't know. Let's say five inches. That's going to work. Perfect. And I can get rid of all this extra geometry. Don't need it, 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 don't need it. And I want to make these tubes. So I used five inches. Uh, actually, I don't want to quick get rid of my reference geometry just yet. I made it five inches. And I want this centered on that panel that I'm lined up with. So I'm going to do a push pull of 2.5. And 2.5, I'll come around to this side, pull this out, 2.5, and this one, 2.5. All right, I'm gonna grab all of that, make that into a component. I know they're not really trusses anymore because trusses are a bunch of components connected together, and this is actually just two tubes. But uh, I've used that term so far, so I'm sticking with it. All right, I'm gonna grab that then by some geometry I know, which is the midpoint of this piece right here. Drop that right there. After I drop it in, looks good. And triple click this surface and delete it. Awesome. Now I can take that, hop back under here, get rid of my hidden geometry. Let's rotate, let's spin. So really, I don't even have to use this piece. I can go from the middle of any one piece, or actually the edge even, Modifier key to copy once. And then we're gonna do that. 47X. Ooh. I didn't even know that's what it, you know, I've, I've, like I said, I said this before, I've never been to the Space Needle, so I can't really claim a whole lot of information about it. Um, it's a cool looking building. It's from the 60s, I think. That's most of what I know about the Space Needle right there. Um, but I can't say I've ever actually dove in and seen how the pieces are put together. It's kind of cool. Okay, so somebody's calling it saying they would call them struts. That makes, that makes sense. I get that. All right. All right, just to uh, take this a little bit further, I just want to put a, a teeny bit of polish on here. Um, one thing is these breaks don't have to actually be here. So I'm going to select these pieces real quick toggle so soften on and off um, that was like going away so i'm wondering if there's actually huh i don't know why that's not oh because i didn't get that up high enough there we go all right so that looks cool um one thing that I don't like as much with this, or that I'm, I'm, not, I'm not satisfied with where it's at, is these windows. Um, if I hop back over here and look at the... How close can we get here? So the windows... It's actually hard to tell because there's a cage over the, the viewing area, which makes a lot of sense. Um, can't trust humans to keep themselves alive, you know. Got to take care of them, especially when you put them 600 feet off the ground. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going to assume that there is some sort of a frame around the window and that the window's inset. Uh, it could actually be out like this. The reason I want to modify this is 
once I start putting geometry on or something like that, I may end up looking at this in kind of a, a hidden line view where I don't have uh, all of my edges. So if I was to come over to my styles and do something like, you know, turn my edges off, then that's going to go back to one smooth looking piece like that. Smooth looking model. Um, so what I can do, and this is something I, I would do for something like uh, 3D printing or something like that, is actually convert these pieces, this single panel, into a component. Uh, we'll put some depth on there like molding or whatever around the window and then uh, copy it around. So I did a bunch of talking there to, to say things. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to grab this, just those two, right click, make component. And we'll call it windows. It doesn't matter which one, I just grab any of them. It doesn't, doesn't matter where they're at. Uh, once I have that set as a component, I'm going to grab all the rest of these window panels, except for this one, and delete them. I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm saying this with authority like I know how this is going to go, but I'm just testing the theory. I think this is all going to work. Um, so I'm going to take this now. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to offset this. Not a lot. Maybe, yeah, two inches. I'm going to push this in. We'll say that's two inches also. Come down here, same thing, double, whoops, offset, two inches, push pull, two inches. All right, so what that did was that created, it's just gonna give me some depth on that window. What I can do now is grab one of those and I can spin it around by going from one piece option, just like I did all these other ones. And I can say 47x. All right, and that just gives us a little more depth. Rather than those segmented, it was nice and it was easy, and I'm glad we got to look at how to do that. But doing it this way actually gives me some depth of those windows. And if I was to do something like turn my edges off, you can still see that geometry right in there. Cool. All right, so something that I'm, well here, let's, before I go any further, I'm gonna turn, turn, I don't need profiles. I'll turn my edges back on. Um, we do have a uh, antenna that goes up, so I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna draw another circle. I'm just, rather than doing the full 48 sides, which is what I have now, I'm gonna do this, this will be a low polygon. <clears throat> low, uh, low fidelity, is that the term I'm looking for? Low quality circle. Oh, I'm not. There we go. Because I don't need it to be. Uh, fancy, I don't need a high quality circle right now. So I'm going to take that up to. There's my peak. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to scale that about the middle down to a needle, needle size, cool. And save, Command S. Whew. Got it. <laughs> you guys are just so clever. <laughs> All right, um, so one of the things that I'm thinking about right now is how much I want to put into making this a single solid. You guys know I like to solid model. I like to, I, if m all my models could be solid, I would always be happy. Um, a lot of teeny pieces on this. I'm wondering how, how worthwhile it is to do. Um, what should I do? Oh, I'm gonna make this, make this a group. And I'm gonna make all of this a group. Take that over, and I think I was on the red axis before I was, so I can take it, put it right back on there. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. Cool. Oh man. 
That's looking good. Snazzy. All right. Um, cool. So I'm going to save because, you know, because I do that. That's what I do. All right. So that's looking pretty good. I like that. Um, next thing is this, uh, what do you call it? Elevator shaft thing. Um, all right, so I had a question for you guys. Maybe, maybe somebody out there knows this. I haven't had anybody pop up and call themselves a Space Needle historian or enthusiast on this, this yet, but uh, maybe you're out there and just haven't been asked. Um, this down here, this section right here, uh, it doesn't seem to be on every illustration or image that I see. It's on some, but not on others. Does anybody know? Is that like something that was added at some point. I guess it is on this one. It's just not on the first one I used. I don't know. I'm just wondering about that. Um, all right, so quick ramble there. Got it out of my system. So there's a couple more in what I would say are crucial parts to this and we do have the base down here I'm not blowing it off I'm just it's kind of a circle it's basically what we did at the top not real exciting um, but the pieces oh this is the skyline banquet facility that's what this is of course duh um, so we'll want to get this we'll want to get this modeled for sure Adam yes ma'am hi sorry no problem we have two questions here I don't know if you want to have a look at them okay uh, Safax is asking how you controlling it very easy that is something I'm doing with the space mouse. It is called the Star, the uh, Space Mouse Enterprise. It is from a company called 3D Connection, and that allows me to move in 3D space. I should point out too that this tool is not just for SketchUp either. It is a tool that can be used in a lot of 3D uh, applications. So if you use ZBrush or any other 3D modeling tool, you can actually use it in there too to spin in 3D, as well as things like Photoshop or Illustrator. It'll actually, this, this puck will become a uh, panning tool. And again, the buttons are all programmable, so you can actually program shortcut keys in any application. So it's a good tool if you do any kind of 3D modeling or 3D design work to have. Mm -hmm. That definitely makes a little bit difference. Yeah, it yeah. does. It's, it's a nice way to show it. <laughs> yeah. And Retsvan23 is asking if we can say something about SketchUp's future development. <laughs> well, I can say that we're developing. <laughs> Unfortunately, as a staff member, it's against the rules for me to talk about future releases. So I can't talk about anything other than what's actually been released. And usually that's pretty easy for me because I sink myself pretty deeply into the release software and I don't uh, spend time in the unreleased software, mostly because I spend so much time with you guys. Um, so uh, we are always working on software. There's always new stuff coming out. And uh, unfortunately, that's the most I can say about that uh, at this point. So once we do have a new release course, we'll hop on here, we'll, we'll make a deal of it, and we'll model something <laughs> in the new software. But right now, unfortunately, uh, not a lot to say. I don't want to tease you guys because like I said, mostly because I don't really know a whole lot about what's coming out, but I know there's a lot of people working on a new version. Um, all right, let's, uh, so the things I was saying, uh, hey, you said that, Andrew, not me. I didn't say anything like that. All right, <laughs> there's these three, one, two, actually it's like the three, four, five, six, seven sections where I have beams kind of going across between the three legs. I'm assuming these are, again, some kind of lateral support. So I'm gonna put those platforms in. Oh, it says that it actually calls it a platform. Can you actually see that on, oh, it is, it's a full on, these pieces up here, I'm looking at the, the big picture, these ones here are just beams that go between, like box beams that go between the, the legs. These are actual platforms. They, they do fill the whole space. And then on this one is where that banquet hall sits on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some shapes in here to represent these pieces real quick. Here, here. We'll throw a couple beams around right here. And then we'll get to the, uh, that center tower, the elevator shaft, and the banquet hall. 
All right, so the first one is one, two, three braces up. So right here, I'm just going to use that x, y, z point to spin around and create a surface like that. Okay, so what I can do now, I'm trying to think what's, what's the best way to do it, looking at it, it looks like it goes like this. It looks like that triangular shape is like that. It looks like it goes from the inside of the beams. So I might do something like that and I could intersect this, but it's just a few faces. So I would probably, if I were doing this, which I am, I would probably just come in here and click around like that on the three sides. Um, not that there's anything wrong with intersecting, but with intersecting, I'm gonna have so much cleanup to do. By doing it this way, there we go. Now I can actually come out here and just, oops, I didn't close something. Something didn't work, I missed the line. Oh, I didn't put lines out here. <laughs> Whoa, must be Friday. I didn't put lines across the edge here. And closed. All right. I can take that then, and I can pull that up to the top of this piece. And then that geometry, that I'll probably intersect face with model. There we go. Okay. Um, I'll grab all of that, make that a group. I'm making a group instead of a component because I'm not going to repeat it. Um, and I'll probably do the exact same thing right here. It looks like the bottom of one, two, three, this one right here. I could actually, I could do this without, let's see if I could do this. If I come over here like this, this is the one that's on axes. So if I do that, then I could grab all these lines and go to the middle here and say, rotate that from this corner option to this corner two times. When I do that, didn't work. I did something wrong. Let's try it again. Have that geometry rotate from the middle of the circle. Or rotate it from this one, option, to this one, to x. There we go. That's easier. I have to draw that plane. Connect it all together now. Three lines here to create the bottom of my platform. There we go. Now push pull that up here. Grab all that. Make that a group also. Nice. If I do say so myself. Which apparently I do. Okay, so then it looks like between this point and this point, we have even, not evenly spaced, one, two, three, four, five sets of horizontal beams going across. So I'm going to do this on one side, and then I will, let's see, I'm going to do it on this side, because this side is on axes. So I'm going to come here. There. I'm trying to figure out what to do now. All right, I'll come up here, five feet, and then go across to there, to there. Push that in. No, you know what? I don't want to, I actually want to be doing this on the inside, not the outside. Whoa, hope I didn't get anybody dizzy there. Sorry, apologize. All right, and then come this way, five feet. 
and then take that back across that. Okay, so then I'll take that out this way. Uh, 24 inches. And then I'm just going to grab the ends and run those. Oh, I can't just push pull. Well, I'm okay with that. So you know how I like that that brace. All right, I want to make that a, make that a group. And same thing I did before. Rotate that. I wonder if I can just scale that up for the other pieces. I'm gonna go from here, option, make sure I come to a full 120 degrees, 2x. Okay. I don't think I can just copy that up, unfortunately, because this changes geometry as it goes. I'm gonna come in here and do the top one. Oops. Where, where's my, oh yeah, that's right. It's going red to there. Go across to there, back up to here. Pull that out, 24. You know, repetitive input's never fun, but it's always interesting to see, after you've done it once, how much easier it is the second time. All right, grab that, make that a group. Two X. All right, so now I got those two braces, and there's some braces inside. Ugh. I guess I should do. Um, let's see. They don't look like they're evenly spaced, though. That's the thing that. I'm getting hung up on because there's one further down. These ones look like they're evenly spaced, but this next one looks like it's a little further down. So maybe I'll do that right here. And then come this way. Five. Five feet. All right, just draw that rectangle real quick. Push pull it 24. Bury that in the beam. Make group. Spin it. Actually, that's it's dumb to keep doing that because uh, every time I do that, I gotta copy it again. So maybe I'll just make three of these. Four, push pull it into the beam, push pull it in the beam, make it a group, and then one more right here exactly maybe. All right, that foot, carry it over on the red axes. In case you guys are wondering, I do talk like this when I'm modeling on my own. This isn't for your, your benefit. <laughs> Actually, I don't. That, that would be terribly annoying. All right, and we'll grab that, take it by the center, go from this. Option, of course, to make a copy, 2x. All right, there we go. We are looking pretty good. I can get rid of this thing now. Now, two more important things. Uh, we got this big trust uh, elevator tube. Let's save that. Uh, and I gotta find a better picture of it than what, this, this thing's not working for me. So let's go see what, uh, what you guys have, have presented me with. Whoa, wait a minute. Somebody's messing with me. Jack's, Jack's posting something that is totally not <laughs> the Space Needle. Uh, Base Camp Benelux. 
Evelyn Eiden Eindhoven. I just murdered that, but that's a cool looking building. It's something out of uh, Men in Black that were made in the 70s. Um, so, well, I guess I can just kind of wing it because there's really, I haven't seen anything that's an awesome picture of this center structure. Looks like there's actually stairs that go up. That would, that would be terrifying. What I was hoping, the only thing I'm, so what I'm looking for is, like, I'm trying to see if this repeats a certain number of times. Like, is it a, is it a, a hexagon where the truss face repeats six times? Um, it's really hard to tell from any of these pictures, though, because it looks like it's simple enough. It's straight. That's kind of cool. As it goes straight down, um, that makes it real easy. I don't know if you guys remember the the trusses we did on the Burj Al Arab where they were triangle shapes that <laughs> got bigger and then smaller. So all of the different, all the cross pieces in the truss were different sizes. That was not as much, that was not easy. This looks pretty easy, but I'm trying to figure out how many times it goes back and forth. Um, getting close to that time where we start winging it. All right. I'm gonna say it's six. I'm going to say it's a hexagon. Um, so let's, uh, I'm going to make a hexagon of this shape right here, going all the way across. Okay, so we're going to say that this is, this is going to be 18 feet. Um, so I'm just going to come in here and put a line right here. Wow, 18 feet doesn't seem very big, does it? I'm gonna double check that dimension, but uh, I think that's what I got. Yeah, okay, so 18 feet to the outside. So I'm gonna come in here right now with a polygon, just for, uh, oh yeah, look at that, look at that, ooh, let's slide right inside there. <laughs> Love it when a plan comes together, especially when I had no idea if that plan was going to work at all. Cool. I like that. Okay, so I'm going to take this piece right here. Why is it selecting? Oh, because it's a polygon. Um, all right, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to explode that curve and I'm going to explode that curve and double click here and make this into a component. I call this shaft segment. Um, uh oh, you're right. I'm not move. Hey, I could do whatever I want right now. Yeah, you're, you're scaring us, Aaron. You're frozen on the, the video here, so some of us can't concentrate because we're staring at the frozen you. <laughs> I'm so focused right now. <laughs> Let's see if we can fix that. All right. Um, it's not a bad expression, though. It's a standard SketchUp focus face. I think the camera may have turned off. Hold up one sec. Everybody just be cool. It's cool. And while Aaron is gone, I'll narrate what he's doing so it's more interesting. He's checking cables and uh, plugging things back in. Oh, there's my back. So hold on a second. Work. Navigating the uh, nest of cords back here, and he's coming around the corner, and there he is. <gasps> Yay! I can see me now. <laughs> <laughs> now your back is frozen. Oh, there he goes. Let's take a sec. There's that, that delay that we we work with here. Jiggling cords seems to have helped, That's like right. it always does. Have you tried turning it on and back off, off and on again? And if that doesn't work, have you jiggled it? That's how it works. All right, so I don't want to get too fancy with this. 
oh, you know what? Actually, I've been putting this off too uh, because it's, well, because I don't have very much good information about it, but I'm going to want to stick this thing on top of, ah, forget it. I'm just talking to myself. I'm good. All right. So in this component, there's a couple things I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this line and I'm going to copy it over one foot and I'm going to grab this line and move it over one foot. Then I'm going to push it in six inches. I'm going to push this in six inches. Okay, now get rid of this. So basically right now what I have is that. And I'm gonna do this now because it's so much, it's fun to watch this come together. I'm gonna take that component and before I do any more input, I'm going to make copies of it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to copy it 5x. So that's what I got right now. Looks good. I'm going to come in here and what I'm thinking about right now here, I'm going to draw a line from here all the way. Such a tall, thin shape. All right, so if I grab that line, which is 487 feet tall, I'm going to divide it evenly. I'm going to divide it into segments because dividing the segments assures that the trusses that I draw now are going to be evenly placed top to bottom, which may not actually be how it is because this is going to be buried inside of a restaurant and then someone's going to go up inside the, the, the piece at the top, uh, but I'm doing it for because... I'm designing, I want to look, I want to look pretty. <laughs> All right, I grab this right here and I'm just gonna say divide and I can slide it up and down to see how big I want those segments to be. Um, if I look at my drawing here, there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 or so segments before this first platform. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there's 10. So something like, let's say 50, let's say 56 segments is gonna look, no, oh, 57 looks fine. Boom, I'm gonna break that right like that. Um, I'm not gonna do anything with all those segments, but the reason I did that was so that I could get this height of one piece. Take that height, come straight over, drop it down like that. And now what I'm going to do is, let's see, what am I going to do? Um, so figure out where the center is, do something like this, create a diamond shape here, it's going to end up being my trusses. All right, and then grab this and I can offset this. Uh, I'm gonna offset three inches both directions. And then I'm gonna clean some of this up. I don't need this, don't need this. And actually don't need this. Something like uh, that. And I'm going to take that shape and I'm going to push it back here. And right now I'm going to grab that, make that a new component. Oops, I made it a group. Make it to a component. because I want to make sure everything looks good. And if I have to make a change, if I, if I was to make this a group, oop, look at that, there's definitely some issues there. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna hide the rest of my model. 
I'll clean that up right now. I don't want all that extra geometry inside this piece. And then actually I'm going to delete this surface right here. Delete this surface right here. Guess I'm going to do this surface right here. Delete it. And the surface on the bottom I'm going to leave. No, I'm just kidding. Delete that one too. All right. Now that I have all that open, I'm going to grab this piece. Option, copy it up. What did I do that? 67? I forgot. 57? All right. So let's just say uh, 50, 56, X. Ooh, nice. Can I look at that and see if that looks good? That looks really good. Um, that was way easier than the trusses we did on the burge. One thing I might do is right here. So I, again, this comes, th this is a question of how you want to model stuff. And I'm not going to tell you how you have to do things. Um, but depending how I want to clean this up, uh, one of the things I might want to do is if I wanted to explode these, I could actually come in here, select all of them, explode them, join them together and clean them up. Um, but there's definitely a, a reason to leave them as connected pieces. Clean up or any changes I make later definitely be easier if they're their own components. But what I might do is the only thing that really signifies the separate component is this line right here. So what I might do is I might come in here and shift erase the line at the top and bottom. And what that'll do is it'll make it look like it's seamless. So it's still separate geometry. This geometry is separate from the next one, but because that line is erased, or I'm sorry, it's hidden. So shift erase here. We gotta do it on the front and back. And shift erase the bottom. Yeah, that looks, that looks much better. Uh, last thing I want to do is come in here into this one, this line right here. Uh, I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to grab all my geometry and I'm just going to go to extension cleanup and I'm going to say erase straight edges. That'll get rid of that extra line that I had in there for reference. Awesome. Cool. That looks, that's pretty slick looking. I'm going to save that because I like it. I like saving and I like my model. Two reasons to save. All right, so we're looking, we are looking pretty good here. Uh, get rid of that. And like I said, <laughs> I just kind of, again, you know, I try, I don't, I generally don't prep too much for this because design is part of the process. I love to hear you guys' ideas and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I really had no idea. I really didn't look at a picture of this before this morning. <laughs> okay, so down at the bottom, I'm, I'm looking at uh, a blow up. I have this on the second monitor. I'm looking at this right here. And this looks like it has a little bit of a cant in, but it basically, it's a circular building. It has a little bit of a step up to a second ring. Um, this looks pretty easy, so I'm just going to do this as a follow me. And uh, I'll use the same geometry used for the needle uh, restaurant at the top, which is 48. Um, and I'm going to grab our elevator shaft right here. I'm going to group this all together. And uh, I'm going to put it on its own layer because I want to hide it. There's a preferred way to do that than just hitting hidden. So I'm going to come in with a circle. I'm going to bump it back up. Oops, cover my to 48 again, which is the number of sides ahead up top. I'm going to go from the middle here and I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to pull it out so it just hits that edge. And then I'm going to offset it in just so it clears that. There we go. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to move it up. And this is where I'm just going to use a ballpark based on this right here. And I want to follow, not exact, but kind of mimic the cant of the, uh, 
the legs there. So I'm going to grab this center circle. I'm going to hit scale, scale about the middle. And I'm also going to uh, hit shift, S shift, shift option. So you can see my, you can see that the unique position my hand is in for that. Um, but that's going to allow me to shrink that whole circle. There we go. Nope, I let go of something. <laughs> that's, Start, start bragging about your, your wicked modifier key tools and then screw it up. All right, so shift is going to scale uniform. Option is going to scale about the middle. So hold those two down and bring it in until the, that circle is just shy here, which will give me, like I said, a similar cant to what I had already. And then it looks like what happens is, it's actually it's hard to tell because it kind of looks like this is what happens. I'm going to model this. I don't know if this is right or not. I'm going to offset this circle and I'm bringing it out like this. And I'm going to take it and move it vertically down. It looks like it sets in like this. And then I'm going to push pull it up and then scale that. That is sort of the shape I am seeing on this drawing. See, it looks like it kind of comes in. And I was, I was a little confused about, I didn't think that was right. And then on this image, it looks like it's doing the same kind of thing. It goes down and up. Mine's a little more exaggerated, but I think this, I think this drawing is just a little understated. Okay, I'm gonna pull that down just a touch. So I think something like that is going on. Around the outside, it does look like there are windows similar to what we had on the top. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. Um, I'm actually gonna save myself a step this time. I'm going to create that, double click, make that into a component. Oh, I thought I had that. Delete all of this. Go in here, just like I did before. I did that wrong. This should stop right here. There we go. So I'm going to offset that again two inches. And then I'm going to push this back in a couple inches. Aaron? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Ethan um, just gave us the right dimensions, the real dimensions of the foundation. Oh, all right. Yeah, would you like to have a look? Yeah, is that a, whoa. You make the foundation the right dimensions, 120 by 120 by 30. All right, I can model that. I know how to do that. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'm going to give this a little bit more. up at the top. All right, now I'm going to take that and I'm going to rotate that based off this circle. 47 times. Oh, right. Whoa, yeah. That's a thing I didn't even want to model. It looks awesome. All right. Um, let's unhide this. Oh, it's, it's, it's coming together, guys. All right, so 120 by 120 by 30. If I wanted to come in here and create a rectangle, I'll get my middle point and hit my modifier key. That's going to let me draw 120 feet, X 120 feet. Hey, Aaron, I got a follow-up question for you to ponder while you're doing that. Uh, Evan is uh, curious if uh, you have the same problem that he does where when you uh, <laughs> accidentally discover some piece of info about the thing you're modeling and then you have to include it. I don't know. Evan just gave me more information, so I don't know if I want to answer that question because he might dump more on me if I answer it wrong. <laughs> uh, that... <laughs> That does happen. Yeah, I'm not. Yes, I guess. I guess yes. Why? Do you know something of that, about a thing that I didn't include? No, I just was going to say. You know, <laughs> it, technically, it's a derivative work, so everything you've done is I, perfect. 
That's true. I'm. This is a model of a building inspired by the Space Needle in Seattle. See how I did that? Liability gone. Um, no, actually, all, all joking aside, of course, yes, that's... I suffer from a condition where I like to start doing things before fully getting an idea of what it is I'm doing. Sometimes that's fun if I'm uh, in a place where I'm entertaining others with my pain. That can be a fun thing, but uh, fact is, if I'm actually doing something for like production, it can, it can definitely hurt me a little bit and I have to force myself to pump the brakes and make sure I have the information I need before I dive into modeling. But that does happen. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a thing. I've definitely done a spot where I've gotten to a point where I'm like, ah, oh, this is awesome. This is great. This is, oh no, it's wrong. And then I've actually done it several times on this live stream. And I think what we've always ended up doing is going, this is Aaron's version of this thing I'm modeling. <laughs> because you probably do get to a point where, yeah, it's not worth going back and changing at this point. Um, and actually, Evan is mm -hmm. still giving us some more information. And he said that the weight of the foundation is the same as the needle. So the center of mass is five feet above the ground. Whew. Hashtag information. Hashtag smart guy. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, short answer, yeah, that happens. That happens a lot. Okay, um, so the one outstanding, not like, ooh, outstanding, like outstanding, like, ooh, outstanding um, piece on here is the banquet hall. So that, of course, is this right here. This actually looks like it's not going to be too difficult um, to model. We can model it in thirds. That's a plus. It's kind of, it's emulating the same fins we had up at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fins. Uh, looks like it's got, this is all flat. This is nice because it'd be simple. Flat face here between uh, these columns. And then I got kind of a rounded section. I think it's rounded. Maybe it's straight. I would look on another picture. Um, yeah, see, this makes me feel like it's supposed to be rounded too, but... I might just be seeing that. You guys seeing that? Does anybody else see that piece in there? Have a thoughts on how that's supposed to actually look? Because I'm kind, I'm kind of thinking it's supposed to be round, but actually it could go back straight, cut over straight, and come back out straight. Let me know what you think. If you, if you, uh, if you have been there, if you've been there in the, into the banquet hall, no, that's great. Firsthand experience is awesome. If not, uh, let me know how you think that should get modeled, because. Uh, I'm leaning towards kind of rounding it off just because I think it would look cool. All right, but I'm going to hop in here and make this thing. The only issue I have really right now is I have zero dimensions because the one thing, <laughs> the one poorly scaled drawing I'm working off of doesn't include this. So uh, I will have to uh, wing this thing. Um, all right, so I'm going to turn the shaft off again. And this is going to be kind of my working, this is what I'm going to work off of right here. I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to start with, I don't know what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. All right, so I want to get two. Oh, one of these sides is on axis. Why am I using the non on at the off axis side? Here we go. So what I want to do is just get some reference geometry here. This is how wide the thing should be. Um, that from the middle perpendicular to this face, that's going to come back like that. This here is going to come back like that. Right. That is the piece I'm working. Okay, so Andrew's saying it does look like they are straight. So what that means is I will actually come 
straight back here. So this is what well, we can actually, we'll make this a solid. So bring this back like that. So that is what one third of this thing is going to look like. Um, again, I don't really have, you know what I need to do? I need to import another image. We'll, we'll lay this one. I'm going to save. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, you can't even stop me. I'm going to save. All right, I have saved. I'm going to come into styles and I'm going to load in a watermark real quick. Give me another picture. Um, is this the one I want? No, this is, well, yeah, this will work. course. Let's put it right in the middle. That sounds good. Um, just fill it up a little bit. Bring some of this stuff up so it's out of the way. All right, there we go. So now we can at least kind of get a reference. It looks like the overall height is about halfway between, before the roof, is about halfway between these two supports. So something like that. And then it looks like it comes out. I'm just massing right now. Just massing with you. Architecture joke. Um, I'm going to pull this into. This is the bottom. <laughs> 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 Killed it. All right. Um, so I'll pull it in even more. Just got to make sure that my shape is actually going to fit inside because this tapers I can't just throw anything in there oops just want to get rid of that little guy all right the other thing I'm gonna do is rather than doing this twice I'm gonna cut this piece in half this now is going to be one sixth of what was this thing again? Banquet Hall. I think I've gotten to the point where I, I sarcastically name things now with too much information because I've been razzed so many times about making sure I, I do that. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's, uh, let's finish blocking this thing out. Um, so this is just... It looks like the windows are actually at a little bit of a tilt like this, which is cool. We'll come out something like that. Um, I need to see the rest of my model. I did something wrong. Something's not right. When this happens, it's not a good sign. All right, let me find out what I did not right. I'll grab a line right here, pull that straight across the green axes. That's where my half should have ended. Ugh. Well, that's what you get for I don't know. I don't know how to end that. That's what I get for, I don't know, something. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to... It seemed intentional to me. You're trying to teach people stuff. So yeah, I, I screwed I, up on purpose. I was pretty it's sure true. it was intentional. I'm going to make that a group. Uh, let's see. Is that... That is solid. This is not currently solid. What do I need to do to make it solid? this out of here edit paste in place I'm not gonna mess with making it all solid right now I'm just gonna dump it all into one group I'm going to intersect with selection and now I can just 
chop off the stuff that I don't need. And I can all of this and 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 this. Okay. Now just to verify this is actually correct, I'm going to select this one and I'm going to use Curic Mirror to option copy over here. That does fall just inside the corner right there. That looks good. Uh, it does meet at a point, also good. So I'm gonna grab both of these now and use Rotate to rotate all the way around one time and then say 2X. All right. Aaron ain't got time for that regular uh, native uh, SketchUp scale mirror. I'm just so bad at it. That's what it's all about. It's all because I just screw it up every time I try. You guys have seen it. You know what I'm talking about. All right. That looks close. Uh, obviously, I need to put a roof on here. Um, uh, all right, so we got a little, little bit of a curve, not as much as I had down here. Actually, that curves up higher, so I actually want to uh, change that. So I'm going to bring that up like this. Put an arc in here, because some of that is actually there. We go. That's those those fins dropping down. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to come, draw a line straight up. Some amount. It looks like with the roof on. Looks like the roof's about like that. I'm gonna take that down to here. Nope. Actually, I'm gonna push pull this out first, and then I'm gonna go from here to here. And push pull that to the center. Okay, that looks good. Over here, what I'm going to do is just pull this up to right here. And I am hitting the edge again here, so I'm going to have to fix that. Um, which means I'll have to push both these sides back in a little bit. This one will have to come in like that much. This one will come in. Actually, let's figure out how much this one should come in. Come on the green axes. Let's come in that much to meet. There, and I can pull this down to get rid of it. All right. Cool. It's coming along. Um, I'm going to pull this over to here, make that the roof, like that. This is going to come across like that. I'm going to bring my windows in ever so slightly, something like that. Nope, nope. Nope, don't erase that, don't erase it. All right, so that's looking pretty solid. It's not a solid, it's actually open, but you know what I'm talking about. All right, I'm gonna take this line across, parallel to this line. Whoops, just as I thought I was there. I'm gonna hide the rest of the model. There we go, that's easier. You know, Sometimes you get in the groove like that and you forget that you have tools to make your life easier. <laughs> well, I don't know if you do. I do. Head down, modeling too hard. Oh, it happens. I'm going to... Oops. Five and seven eighths. And then I got this thing right here. Uh, I'll just get rid of it and then... Draw a line across like that, and a line across like that, and I can draw a line straight up. We got another uh, cheeky save reference here. Nice. Anything crafty, or is it just the same old better save? Uh, a crafty emoji, you might say. <laughs> Do not forget Control S. I remembered only because you told me to remember. All right, we're getting there, guys. We're really getting there. Um, what did, how many fins did I say around the bottom of this thing? Do you guys remember, was it nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I did say nine. Okay. 
Um, the first one seems to be just off the edge. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to come down to here. I need, I need to look at the picture again. So they actually come up past. Um, this is this is bigger. Yes. Andrew suggests nine. I think you're right. Thank you, Andrew. All right. I guess we're good. This is actually a little bigger. Team with no no supporting information. I'm gonna copy this just inside again. And then the fin actually comes part way up here, and then it comes out like something like that. And then it actually comes down. So this is where a lot of times you guys see me draw a uh, reference plane. Because rather than drawing in 3D space, it's sometimes it's really nice to be able to have a like, it's like drawing on a piece of paper rather than drawing in the air. Which, you know, have you seen 3D pens? I don't get it. I, I have a hard time. I'm sorry, that's totally random. But uh, yeah, I understand 3D pens very well. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do actually before? Since this is all loose geometry and I'm gonna reuse this fin, I'm gonna double click this shape, the profile of the fin I'm creating, make that a component right now go into that, and now I'm gonna push pull that to whatever. The, I don't remember what we did up top, five inches? Something like that, okay. And now I can take that, and I'm gonna grab it by the middle, option copy it over to right here. And since there's a total of nine, that means I wanna put slash four and that should give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yay! The only thing that that is doing is it is doubling up on that center one. So there's actually two right here. Once I make my my uh, restaurant all one, I would just want to make sure I delete that extra piece out. Maybe. I mean, if I explode it, it'll just merge geometry back together. So it wouldn't be too bad. <clears throat> all right. That's looking okay. Mine looks beefy. Looks like the, this, this part looks okay. It looks like it has a little bit of a rail around here, but the windows are definitely not that big. And this is definitely lower profile. So I'll fix that. That's an easy one. So once I have this geometry in here, I can just grab that, slide it down vertically. It's gonna mess with my curve, but that's okay. I'll come back and fix that in just a second. So the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this and drag that down vertically also. That's definitely closer. It actually doesn't even look like it's curved. It looks like it's flat. Oh, man. You're lying to me, little tiny picture that I can barely see. But yours is right, remember? So, <laughs> uh, Der Derivative work, is that what you said, Josh? The, the space needle's going to need to change. That's right. Come on, guys. Keep it together, would you? Um... I'm going to draw a rectangle inside this shape. When I uh, shifted all the stuff around, I made a mess. Um, but I don't actually need this geometry anymore. There we go. That looks more like, that looks like it. Ah, uh, good enough. I'm happy with this. Um, all right, so the one thing I may do here is I may grab all these pieces, make them into one group, go into that group, and this geometry in particular, I think I want to get all welded together. So I'm going to grab these pieces and explode them. 
And I should be able, if this is all on plane, I should be able to come in here and delete these lines. Uh, <laughs> this can be, this is always a test. This can be a test, because if you come in here and you start deleting lines and like spaces start disappearing, then you know something didn't happen the way you wanted it to happen. So, but it looks like we, we got, I almost said we got lucky. Like it worked out the way we planned on it working out is what I meant to say. Um, I'm deleting this extra fin because again, each half of the component had an end one, so those two ran over each other. I'm gonna grab all this geometry now and I'm gonna run clean up. Um, gonna grab Amar that. says, cool work, good job. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Amar. Thanks for coming by. Um, so I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna merge faces. Awesome. All right, so with that, we come in here and turn the shaft back on. Oh, wait a minute. That's a weird line in the middle of the thing. It's weird. That's over here too. See that little dot right there? Huh. Leftover geometry. Oh, I didn't run, I didn't run erase uh, loose geometry. I just ran the merge faces. That's why. Okay, so having said that, having done that, um, I know that my foundation is exactly 120 feet by 120 feet and uh, 30 feet deep and that the center of gravity is five feet off the ground. So I kind of feel like I'm pretty close to done. Let's save that. All right, you guys seeing anything I'm missing? Is there any obvious obvious pieces that uh, are supposed to be in there? Because I feel pretty happy about this. I feel, I'm feeling good about myself. Uh, the cleaning plugin is called Cleanup. It's actually Cleanup 3. It's right here. Uh, it is from the content developer, or the extension developer, TomTom. Tom, and it's actually a free extension. It's great because it will go through and it will get rid of extra geometry. It'll move geometry where it's supposed to go. It definitely uh, does a good job of uh, putting stuff back where it's supposed to be. It, I will mention that it does give you some tools that you can use if you try hard enough to mess up your model. So if you come in here and run clean, there's some options in here like erase hidden geometry. So anything that's hidden will get thrown out. Um, Erase duplicate faces. So if you have two faces that are supposed to be in the same spot but in different contexts, you may lose them. Um, so there is some stuff in there that you might not want to run all the time. Generally speaking, I used to run the full gamut of everything on my models and everything, but I generally now just use cleanup and then run one or two of these instead. Generally, it's merge faces and then erase stray edges. Um, but that's just to, to help clean up my model a little bit. Uh, but yeah, a really good tool. Yeah, it is from TomTom. Tom. Um, you know what? I So I just ran up to a point. So he's asking if the needle is actually complete, but I do see... that there's like a little basket thing up here. Uh, there. That little thing. Should probably put a, a thing like that out there. I'll do that. Maybe a little wider. All right, so. That was a pretty simple shape, but I forgot. It's basically like a, a crow's nest. I wonder if it's big enough to actually get in. So we'll go. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna grab the top of the, oops. Command X, go into context where I have this. Oh, go in context again. Now I can edit paste in place. 
grab this circle, follow me. Huh. That looks too big. <laughs> that's supposed to be a little, little narrower. So I'll just grab that channel. Oops, you know what didn't happen? I did not get that bottom face. But that's easy enough to fix. I'll just throw a couple lines like this. Close that geometry up. Right click on the white and say orient faces to get my right side facing out. Um, all right, so if I grab this right now and I start scaling, what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna scale because the geometry is connected, it's gonna scale this down here as well. I don't want that to happen, so I'm gonna grab this, temporarily make it a group, scale it, I'm gonna hit option scale one direction. That looks better. And then I'll just do the same thing this direction. Whoa, 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 super zoom. All right, there we go. Option, scale that to 0.7. And then I can explode it. By doing that, I didn't resize the post that was on just that little crow's nest shape. So yes, now at this point, I have completed, I think, the needle. A little dot right there. Ivan, Ivan is asking if you're planning to model the interior with a very cheeky smile. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know the answer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll call this an exterior model, this particular one. It would be interesting. Um, the obvious drawback would be that these are the interior pieces. This is what I have for interiors. And I can, I don't know, it's a little confusing because I guess this is stairwell, which is why it's offset, but uh, this cross section actually has multiple heights for like this guide here, and then this deck is higher than this deck. so. Uh, yeah, I probably probably won't be going a whole lot further than, than this level of detail. Um, I'm going to grab all of it and make it a group, just to make it one big piece. And I'm curious, I do want to look at this uh, without my edges on. Let's turn edges off and just see what that looks like. Ooh, yeah. So Andrew is impressed, but not the normal kind. He's... He says it's deeply impressive. Ooh, below the surface impressive. That's, that's good. All right, so there we go, guys. That is what we managed to do in just about two and a half hours. That's not bad. I feel pretty good about that. I wasn't, and again, <laughs> so I was intimidated when we did the Burj. I will tell you honestly, because it, you know, it has that sail, the soft part, and, and like, I couldn't find good reference photos. I was I was concerned. I didn't I didn't know how that was going to turn out. I thought it turned out pretty good. This one, I went a different route and didn't think about it at all <laughs> until this morning. In fact, I think I walked in and somebody said, "What are you modeling today?" And I said, "The Space Needle." And I need to find some images. That was about nine o'clock. So, um, yeah, all things considered. That's not, it was not as crazy complex of a model as I thought it was going to be, but it was a, a lot of repetitive input. Again, one part of it was that like the legs, we did one sixth of the legs since it itself copies and then a circular array of three sides. Uh, the other piece where there's a lot of geometry is here in this, the uh, tower in the middle and that tower ends up being like, like you saw, one piece that's just repeated. So I guess there's probably more of a story there about fear of modeling that you shouldn't be scared uh aaron i've got a request uh <laughs> yes sir that i really just can't wait to have you do here uh so i've been staring at I'm, I'm, i've got a sore spot or a soft spot for the uh blueprint image there in the bottom corner i love those blueprint oh, looks yes absolutely uh could you throw that blueprint style on the uh, on the model is that uh sure is that asking too much no because i know that's that happens to be a Oh, right here, right? Isn't it one of these? Nope, not there. Assorted styles. Yeah, there it is. There it is. 
get it, we'll have to get in, in like detail shot in here. Pretty cool. So Josh, you were, I mean, we're talking, just to mention blueprints, you were an architecture student, right? Uh, I was. So when you were going to school, did you have to deal with blueprints at all? Uh, we did a lot of hand drawing, but we didn't actually uh, create you know, the actual blueprints. Those are a little more old school than me. Oh, dang it. But uh, it's, I just love the look of it. It's pretty cool. Because I was going to say, wh when I first, very first started doing design work, uh, was I think just before, actually a lot of people probably gave up on blueprints like by then, but I was working for some old, old school guys. Because I remember having to go get blueprints made and man, what, it, what a stinky solution. It was so gross. They just smell like ammonia and, oh, it's bad things. Yeah, there's some chemicals involved. Yeah, it's not, it's not good. And, and they, they, I still remember the feel on your fingers, too. I don't know if you used them enough to, like, oh, it's so bad. Blueprints are terrible. So happy that we have regular just printing straight on paper now. Yeah, but this style it can be really cool with certain models. Yeah, this is, this is kind of an odd one because... You'd have to modify it a bit because you get edges so close together. But yeah, it still looks pretty cool. But that original drawing, I, I love that. Whoever found that, that's pretty cool. That's kind of nice. Um, very cool. Uh, Lenny says, I was a draftman 50 years ago. Lots of ink, ink on, on mylar. mylar. Yeah, so I did do that. I did do ink on mylar. That's pretty fun. Uh, it feels very permanent, though, when you're drawing, so... <laughs> very, very slow drawing, at least for me. I was always don't afraid to don't screw it make up, a don't mistake. Screw it up, don't screw it up. But there is a mylar eraser, though. That's kind of cool. It's a special eraser. That's cool. There's a needle at night. Yeah. And fax paper. Remember Who remembers fax paper? That was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> that roll of stuff. Oh, so bad. Yeah. Paper, paper's really nice. Um, all right. Well, now we're just we're just doing things. Um, we talk about stuff. Get rid of those profiles. There we go. All right. So that is what will end up in the three D warehouse. Excuse me, Mark. Hold this for me, would you? Oh, didn't work. I will get that. Excuse me. Posted and a link in the forum for anybody who wants to play with that or do anything with it. Uh, it'll be up on Warehouse in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, there we go. That was fun. Um, and, w and under time, too. It was less than three. Normally, shoot for three hours, and we're, we're done a little bit quick. But that's, that's cool. Because, um, hey, it's Friday, and now you guys get to go back to whatever you're doing or whatever is next this weekend. Um, next week, one week from today, we will be back here. We have two more sessions, and then we'll actually take a little while off because... Christmas and New Year's fall right towards the end of the week, so we won't actually have uh, any of these during the holiday season. But next week, when we come back, we're going to do some kind of fun stuff. Next week, we're going to celebrate Star Wars, because I don't know if you guys know, but there's quite a few Star Wars fans in the office, myself included. And on the 20th, or actually it's the 19th some places, but end of two weeks from now uh, is when the ninth Star Wars episode comes out episode nine so pretty exciting it's supposed to wrap it all up it's it's kind of a big deal a lot of people are you know losing their minds about it and analyzing trailers and all that kind of stuff we just thought it'd be, you know, it's kind of fun let's pick a model from star wars world so this is gonna be a little different um because it's not actually from episode nine i i, I went through and watched the trailers i don't know if you guys picked anything up but i couldn't find anything that was like really cool that we haven't done there's that new robot but we did that already um, the lightsaber she uses we've already modeled uh, so what I'm going to do is I know it's not from episode 9 but I really want a Mandalorian helmet so next week we're going to come back in here we're going to model a full size Mandalorian helmet and I'm going to see what I can do to get it printed uh, by the time we come back on the 20th so not planning on wearing it to a screening or anything like that but I think it would really be cool to have and I don't know if you guys have been watching Mandalorian but it's awesome. I mean, it's a reason to get Disney+. Plus. Uh, but yeah, so I think that would be kind of fun to, uh, to do. So 
And so, so we're going to do it. So come back next week. We're going to talk Star Wars, geek out, that kind of thing. We'll talk about The Mandalorian. We'll talk about Episode 9. We'll talk about Baby Yoda and Rey or whatever we want to talk about. No porgs, though. I draw the line there. No pork talk. But other than that, it'll be fun. Uh, come hang out. And then we'll be doing one more modeling session on the 20th before we, uh, we head out for break for, for the holiday season. Um, we haven't really specifically picked something to model then. I'm hoping that by then I'll have a printed helmet that I could show you guys, but we haven't picked something. So I would love to, uh, as we wrap this up, if you guys have an idea of something that would be cool to print, or to print, be cool to model, let me know in the comments. So throw some, throw some ideas out there. Uh, what would be a fun model to do before we head out for the, the Christmas and New Year's and holiday season? So, uh... Optimus Prime. I guess it depends on which Optimus Prime you shoot for. Shoot for the 80s cartoon one. It's like 30 faces. <laughs> it's a series of rectangles, but still cool. Um, the new one will be a little rougher. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm going to wrap it up. So, uh, say goodbye. Thank you, Josh. And you're still over there, right? Okay, they're everybody's still over there. <laughs> um, we thank you guys for uh, hanging out with us. Thank you guys for hanging out with us because like I always say, if it weren't for you guys showing up to watch, it would just be me modeling alone in a conference room and nobody gets much out of that. So thank you very much. I'll leave the comments live for a little while. So if you guys do have an idea of what would be a fun thing to print, leave a comment and we will see it. Uh, other than that, we will see you next week. Yeah, thanks to Alice for, and thanks everybody for uh, being nice to her and her first time uh, <laughs> helping Aaron out here. Yeah, maybe Thank if she's ever guys. in town again, she'll come back for this because you guys were very, very pleasant. So It was much fun. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.